everybody, welcome back to The Concealed Journey. I'm Damien, and today we're gonna to be going over the 1R1 drills. So today with the 1R1 drill, we're gonna go over the steps that go through this whole thing. And the 1R1 drill is one shot with a reload followed by another shot. We're gonna talk about distance differences, the practicality of it, reasoning behind it, and also some gear that we use when we run this. And I mean, this is typical range gear. So today, um, most days, almost every day really, I'm running an appendix carry style holster with a spare mag available with it. Now this one particularly is from Tier 1 Concealed. This is the Axis Elite from those folks, and they make some stellar products, they really do. So today, in practice, we're gonna go over the steps of the 1R1 drill, and that's gonna be things like we've already addressed in a previous video, each individual step going through defeating garment, clearing the holster, presenting the firearm. If you're interested in seeing those things actually broken down, there'll be a link here, maybe in the description. So in dry fire, slide's gonna lock to the rear. We're gonna get rid of that magazine. Indexing the new mag. and back on target. Shot, reload, shot. But I'll spend about a minute before I leave for the day and do some dry fire myself. This is something you can absolutely do at home and you should do it at home. Now going through this, like, like previously in another video where we've discussed all the simple steps going up to actually getting that gun, deploying a firearm from concealment. We'll go over the second part of that which is gonna be necessary for this drill and that's actually the reload itself. So as your slide locks to the rear, you're going to be getting rid of this magazine. Now, my thumbs aren't quite long enough to reach. I can touch it, but I can't actually press the magazine release. When I have my proper grip on the handgun here, my thumb can touch the magazine release button, but I can't actually press it. So what I have to do is I have to break my grip a little bit. And that comes with, from my support hand, I start turning the gun a little bit. As I notice, I can feel and see that this gun is locked to the rear, right? So I turn the gun just a tish, break my grip so that my thumb can press the magazine release and I drop free and clear that spent mag. Whether you're having malfunctions or that magazine is empty, it does no good to us. We're getting rid of it because we need to get this thing back into the action. So from this point in time, as the gun is in our workspace, right? And workspace is about halfway between actually having this firearm fully presented in our shooting position and as though this gun were something beautiful to smell. Halfway between those two distances, okay? That's our workspace. Just slightly below our line of sight so that we can still keep our vision and attention to our environment and situation around us. So that's our workspace. That's where we're gonna get rid of that old mag. Then with your support hand, as it's leaving the gun, that mag should be falling as you're going for your second mag. And in this situation, you're going to, once again, defeat garment. Like I said, it's what I do for a living. Defeat garment and index this new mag. And here, I'm putting my middle finger on the outside of the magazine. My thumb is going in between the magazine and my body. And my index finger is riding up what would be the front or the face of the magazine, like so. So as you see, index finger and thumb from this position. Another option that some people carry is maybe they just carry the gun in its own holster without the sidecar attachment and you have it in like a Neo mag or just carrying it in a spare pocket back or so. Either way, indexing the spare mag is going to be exactly the same. The index itself, the position of holding the spare mag, that is gonna be completely transferable wherever you carry a spare mag. And if you can, I don't know why you couldn't. I'm sure there's plenty of explanations or maybe impracticalities of why somebody wouldn't carry a spare mag. But if I could advocate that everybody carry a spare mag for sure, if your first mag goes bunk or God forbid you're in a firefight that actually needs more than 16 rounds, spare mag for sure. Now, wherever you carry that or however you carry that spare mag, this is going to remain the same. This, this mag is falling as we're going for our spare mag. Defeat garment, index magazine, gun is in our workspace. 
and we're going to bring this gun up. And because humans are naturally good pointers, we're going to point this magazine straight into the mag well. Now, typically, you want to use only your peripheral vision to see what's going on here. But your eyes shouldn't leave your situational awareness, your target, our target, this threat, this cardboard silhouette at four yards. It, our vision should not leave this guy at all. Because in the matter of time it, that it may take me to look away from this guy, to look at my mag well, to insert this mag and look back up at the bad guy, he could certainly already be two or three yards away from the my last known position for this guy. There, then I look down at my mag well and I look back up, he's most likely not going to be still standing there, right? Now, you may be asking, why are you doing a reload if you have a threat right in front of you? Let's say you ran dry or let's say you have absolute catastrophic failure with that magazine and the fight is still on. You wanna keep as much attention downrange as possible. So if at all possible, use your peripheral vision to index this magazine. I didn't look, I, my eyes did not break from the target at all as I do this. And that's where the pointing and the muscle memory of the whole thing come into play. At that point in time, now this is something that also has some controversy with it. And that's gonna be, how do we get the slide back home, back into battery? Right, is how do we get the slide back home, back into battery? There are a couple different methods. Now, after you break your grip, you drop that old magazine, and we're bringing new, new mag in. Your thumb is almost naturally already on the slide lock, slide release, slide catch, however you'd like to label it. It's already naturally there. So, being that it's already there, you just press the slide release down, sending the slide forward, chambering new round, back in to the action. Another way to do it is as we insert this new magazine coming over the top and releasing it like so or using our support thumb to come up and press it down before we press out and begin firing again. Those are three ways you can do it. This one's called like the slingshot, right? You can do it this way, I guess, or this way. That's the slingshot. Using your shooter's thumb to release the slide is going to be, in my honest opinion, the fastest way to do it, most efficient way to do it. The other option is to insert this new mag and come up with your support thumb to release it and then go forward. Either one of those three, they all work. What works for you is what's most important because I mean, like anybody else, nothing is going to be exactly the same for you as it is for me, as it is for them. There's no way. So what's most important is that you realize that this is just rebar for a foundation it's a guideline. It's just going to be a grain of salt for you to sprinkle on whatever you want, a reference point, if anything. This is not scripture. This is not black and white. It's not carved in stone. This is just the way that we do it. And hopefully it can help you as well. Even if it's just a point of reference of like, yeah, that's not how I'm going to do it at all. Then sure, it doesn't matter. But this is the way we do it. And I typically actually end up just using my shooter thumb to send the slide forward and then I'm back in the fight. Now, in the 1R1, we're gonna run some actual live drills and show you what you can expect to see.